I have to ask you, the PayPal mafia, how did that happen? How did you get so many great people working at the same company that went on to do so many? Like, if you were to look back on it, was there something? I mean, you know, was it the snacks? Was it the pool table? Yeah, right, how did right. you attract those people and and keep them there? Like so many CEO types that all worked under uh, the same roof. Right. Well, no, I think it's a great question. I, I do get asked it a lot. Uh, the, it's some variation of the question of what was in the water at PayPal, right? And um, I, I think there was three things, really. It was the people, the timing of it, and then what they learned. So the people, the important thing to understand about the early PayPal team is as great as they later proved themselves to be, nobody thought much of us at the time. And, uh, and, and, as a, and, and no one really wanted to work at PayPal. This is back in 1999, 2000, during the dot-com crash. It was considered a very speculative thing. People were not uh, quitting jobs at you know, uh, large companies or McKinsey and so forth um, to go do startups back then. It wasn't like it is now where everyone wants to be at a startup. And really, the only people we could convince to join the company were our friends. And so Peter recruited his friends from Stanford. I was one of them. We got into college together. Max Levchin, who's CTO, recruited his friends from U of I. And so, and then I recruited people I knew and so on down the line. As a result of that, because the team really wasn't hired by headhunters, but really through a friendship network, we were all sort of cut from the same cloth. And you had a much more entrepreneurial type of person at the company. And that's why, you know, you had all these founder personalities really from the get-go is they were all kind of, you know, we were these, uh, you know, more contrarian type personalities. So that was sort of reason number one. And then what happened is that when eBay took over um, the, uh, when eBay bought PayPal, they kind of didn't do anything to retain the team. It was, eBay was like a very corporatist culture and, and PayPal was sort of more like a cowboy sort of really traditional startup culture, you know, very startup-y. And they didn't really make any effort to retain any of the key people. And so you had all these people from PayPal go off to create their own companies. And, and we had done well, but we hadn't done so well that everyone wanted to retire. They all had ideas. They want to keep doing new things. So you had this mass exodus of talent at this timing. And remember, this was in late 2002, 2003. Um, PayPal was one of the few successful outcomes to survive the dot-com crash. So you had all, so you don't know this, but like 20 years ago, the joke was that B2B meant back to banking and B2C meant back to consulting. Everybody was leaving Silicon Valley, okay? Back in the early 2000s because of the dot-com crash. And so by contrast, you had this group of people who didn't experience the crash that way where they failed. They actually succeeded. They saw that it could be done and they went off to create their own new companies. And they almost had the landscape to themselves because everyone else had left. And then the final piece of it was the playbooks that we had successfully figured out, like how you do this, like how you do product management in a startup, like how you hack distribution, like how you go viral. Um, you know, there were all these like tips and tricks and techniques that we learned at PayPal that then got deployed at our new companies. And so you had at a time when everyone else was leaving Silicon Valley, this group of very entrepreneurial people coming off of success and now doing their own things with a series of playbooks that nobody else knew. Because by the way, blogging didn't even start, I think, until maybe 2005, you know, like today there's a wealth of resources where anybody can go online and learn how to do a startup, whether you've been through an experience like PayPal or not. But back in the early 2000s, that just wasn't available. And so you almost had this group of people with a special knowledge and you put all those ingredients together and they just went off and created all these amazing companies. And so I think it was a function of the people themselves, the timing, and then the playbooks that, that we, that we learned at, at PayPal. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> I've always wanted to know the answer to that question. Yeah. And, thank and you then, and answering. by the way, if yeah, so a book it just came out called the founders, which is a, a story about the, founding of PayPal and all the key people who are involved. And it's written by Jimmy Sony and it just came out and um, maybe we'll make a movie or TV show about it one day. Cause oh, cool. yeah, my production company optioned the rights uh, to it. Cause occasionally I make, you know, produce yeah, movies or whatever. Thank you for yeah. smoking. Yeah, awesome. exactly. So this might turn into a story one day that you'll see on a TV or big screen. Um, but yeah, Jimmy Sony's book is, is worth checking out.
in, in the book, the PayPal, uh, I think it's like PayPal Wars. I, mm -hmm. I never got a chance to read it because it's been out of print, but I know about it. Is is that like... Yeah, also so the author of PayPal Wars was actually worked on the marketing team. He actually reported to me. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a different kind of book because what Jimmy did is Jimmy talked to like, I don't know, 200 people. He very comprehensively interviewed everyone involved in the PayPal story. And as a result of that, he had a lot of information I didn't know. There were, he actually dug up things that they, they actually helped round out my understanding of what happened back then because I didn't know what everyone else was thinking. And so it was actually like pretty interesting to learn things that I didn't know. So I think Eric's book is interesting too, but Jimmy did some serious legwork to like find out what everyone was thinking and then reconstruct that story from multiple points of view. Um, I think Eric's story is told from his point of view and that's interesting, but, uh, but Jimmy like did some serious work on this and uh, I think it's interesting for that reason. Yeah, that's awesome. I will, I will yeah. definitely check out the new book and I would love to see a movie. We don't have enough good like business movies. I mean, there are some, but like mm -hmm. we always need more. Uh, so that's awesome. Looking forward to that.